Hello, this is Bridge of Rao with Divine Essentials. All right, guys, so we're in level seven of Elsie Online Healing. And this one is about finding your niche and your purpose. So I have a couple of tricks for this. Um, one of them is basically a exercise where you're going to think about all the things that you're really good at, okay? You don't have to think about them in order or anything like that. Just make a list freely. Just make a list freely of all the things that you're really good at that you know you're really good at. Then on the other side of that, like fold a regular piece of paper in half and have 25 here, 25 here. Just I'm good at this. Okay. Then over here on this side, what do you like to do? Doesn't matter if you're good at it or not. Just what do you like to do? 25 off the top of your head. Then you're going to go through after you've made those two lists and you're going to number them in the order of like, this is the number one thing I'm good at. This is the number 25 thing that I'm good at in that order. Okay. So like if you're the best at something you put in the middle of that list, you make that number one and you just go through and you, you, you make it so that it makes sense. I recommend starting backwards and going to forward. Like I'm not really a fan of this. I'm not really a fan of that as much as this, you know? And, and just figure it out. Figure out what the best thing you are good at and the best thing that you love to do. And look at how those two things can come together in your life and how you could manifest something to help other people with their life. And then think about, like, you could even make another list if you wanted to. The things that people come to get from you or they ask you for help or they you know, seem to just naturally do. Like, are you the best cook in your family? Are you the best recommender of something specific? Like my sister, when I think of my sister, she's always talked, she always knows everything about the celebrities, okay? She could turn that into a lucrative business and I've told her how. Um, if it's somebody that's like, like my other sister, she's great at cooking, right? She could turn that into a lucrative business if she really wanted to. It's a level of what you're really good at, where you're drawn to, you will put the action steps into making things happen when you feel aligned to and realize it's not that difficult. You don't need to be an expert out the gate. You just need to be ahead of the other persons that are there that you're helping. And people flock to people who feel that way to them when they realize that like, like people come to me for certain things and they stick around for other things or they find their way through those little funnels of stuff that I create because when I make a pick a card reading on the Bridget Rao channel for Twin Flames and I mention healing and Elsie Light healing and like the Palladian stuff and the Starseed stuff and the other stuff, those people funnel over and they like and they comment and they subscribe and they do things on other places. Someone finds me on my Instagram and I mention my Etsy shop, they funnel to Etsy to buy a candle or to buy a deck or to buy like my, my PDF things that I've downloaded that I have available to download. And, um, people learn that I am a freaking like crazy shape-shifting business here where it's like, oh, she does that and that and that. And I started off literally as people's this, I helped them with their business. I designed websites for people. I set up their Instagrams, their Facebooks, their YouTubes, whatever it was. And I would help people to make consistent content. I would help them to be on a consistent clock with their stuff. I would always be posting their events and publishing their stuff into groups on Facebook and things like that to help them be found for their offers. Both of the places that I worked at physically had an increase and good things going on from that help and that extra effort. That's why the other one came and found me because they saw the benefits of the other place. So it's not hard to do. Consistency is key, but you need to know your why. You need to know your what, and you need to know how you're being in service to the collective. You know, um, the biggest things that you're ever going to find are emotionally like invested things like love, right? Love is one of the easier like niches to be involved in because people want love but you don't if you're not an expert at love you want to think about how you are an expert or how can you go on a healing journey with other people there's a lot of people doing that now where it's like not the blind leading the blind but somebody that's literally doing that work taking that action step like I did through the whole time of 
the new the the twin flame thing because I'm very much well aware that like if I really truly wanted union I needed to heal I wasn't going to get to union by just like projecting all my shit out and being pissed off and doing all that stuff that's not going to work so I researched other places and that's why my readings were resonant for people that's why I figured out the human parts of it not the magical mystical twin flame stuff about it that that exists and that's part of it and that trumps some of that 3D stuff, but it doesn't make it, 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 it doesn't make it matter the fact that, like, you still need to heal, you still need to grow, and if you don't, you're never gonna find another person to be in union with that is at that level either. You're gonna keep coming back for karmic reset and karmic debt and karmic pain and karmic crap shit until you heal enough to love yourself enough to allow yourself to even demand that level of love from somebody else. But a lot of people didn't go scan over because they weren't ready for that part of it or they didn't want to do that level of the work so finding your niche finding your purpose finding like I said today to somebody I was like the reason why it was so easy for me to be so consistent at that time when I was blowing up the Bridget Rao channel was because I was obsessed you want to be obsessed with what you're doing not on a sick, bad fucking level of like, I'm crazy, you know, mad stalker person here, but somebody that's obsessed and in love and in just like can't get enough of something, okay? What is that that like lights you up, that makes you feel that way? You know, unfortunately, that was a healing process. So as I healed and I healed that part of me, that addiction part of me, that level of that needing to know thing went away because I would get messages from doing the messages. When I would do a tarot reading, I could listen back to it because it's my collective. It's my people that resonate along the level of me, right? And that's why they came because we all have a similar frequency. You're part of my soul family. If you're here watching this, you're part of that resonance, that frequency, that energy. If you hate me, you don't like me, I say something, whatever, and you go away, that's fine because you're not meant to be here. And that's another aspect of this work. When you're finding your mission and your purpose, you don't want to let that shit get too far in and, and take over. And it's hard to see your number drop down or to see that people didn't like something. You have to think about what's important. Is it the fact that like you people please to your own demise because you're going to hate? Don't you? How can you be obsessed with something where you're not speaking the truth? We want to lose the subscribers that don't subscribe to our way of being and thinking and feeling because they're not going to ever purchase anything. They're not ever going to bring any benefit or abundance to you. They're not ever going to be supportive of your cause. If anything, they're going to be daggering you and hating you. So I'd rather see those numbers drop and know that those people are going away because they're making space for the right people and the right opportunities and the right people who get it, who understand you, who see life at the same level as you see or want the same things out of life or you inspire in some way or you've manifested something for them a new way of thinking, a new way of feeling, whatever it is. And those are the things that make the big, like, return on your time. Coaching people is a big thing right now. People just want someone on their corner that cares about them and isn't there out of, like, weirdness or lies or manipulation. Isn't going to just blow smoke up their ass because there's a lot of people out there who will do that for you. And there's a lot of people out there that subscribe to that because they want that. But they're never going to improve. They're going to stay in that toxic place of, oh yeah, blow the smoke up my ass, let me hear the lies, let me hear the illusions, let me pretend, and never get any better. So you want to determine your niche on a level of authenticity, on a level of integrity, and on a level of truth, and be somebody that's always truthful, and you want to like have people trust you, you want to have people like respect you, you want to have people know that you're going to give it to them straight, because it's better to hear it straight than to hear the lie. And just be careful in the way that you deliver it. You don't want to be like, bah, 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 like just rude to people. But sometimes people need a slap in the face of like, hey, what are you doing? You're about to self-sabotage everything you just worked hard on. You know, that's the good person to have in your corner that's going to remind you of that before you just go bah, 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 down. And love, health, wealth, career, money, and like sex, sell. Okay, so like. If you're going to talk about anything, try to think about like being under those main niches of like, how can I help heal the world through their medicine, like your medicine, your natural alternative ways of doing things or your, your natural alternative ways of living so that your mindset is different. Mindset is big. Spirituality is big. 
All of these things can be turned lucrative and powerful for you in your business, but you need to do what you love to do, what you are easily capable of doing, what many people seem to come to you for. And a lot of times we don't recognize our biggest skill. We don't recognize the best thing about us. Everybody else can see it, but we don't always see it. And sometimes that's because other people benefit from you not seeing it because you give it away for free. So they hang around to get that freedom. Or if you do start to charge for your things that are like that, um, you may notice like people get like, like I had in the other video, I said people will resent you when you take that level of freedom away with, with the free for all of like always having your focus, your time, your attention and all of your care and all of your inspiring words and all of whatever it is that you do for them, whether it's food, money, love, sex, just attention or c coming in to be on that same frequency level as another person. You want to be setting the bar for yourself, for your best life, for your best health, for your best wealth, for your best you know, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual levels, and then thinking, how can I share that with other people or help other people to attain this in their life? And whatever you go through is huge too. Um, I can't think of his name. There's a guy that's wrote a few books and he has um, ClickBank, not ClickBank, uh, ClickFunnels, and he's huge into marketing. He is, that's his obsession, okay? When he was a little boy, he used to get like the, the mail deliveries of just like advertisements and stuff, but he was obsessed with the the mentality behind it and why people would buy it and why people would follow through and the call to action and all of the stuff that goes into marketing, which I do have a level of, of that with me because I get all into the um, the mindset of it, like the, 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 like, oh my God, people fall for that? Like it, it blows my mind how, how crazy stuff is and how manipulative stuff is and that's what I want to change or I don't want to bring into my business. I don't want to be the manipulative person using those tactics against people. I want to go the other route. I want to be able to show people the magic part of it where it's like, yeah, we want to know the advertising stuff. We want to know like the, like how to use that stuff on our best side so we don't get taken under by it or we don't go spend all our money wasting. Like I saw a dude the other day. He was like, does your business have credential or like are you trying to be a business coach with um like like a like a backing behind you or like like credibility right i'm gonna show you how to get credibility in these four videos blah blah blah, blah. the dude at the end of it i was laughing so hard i was like is he serious right now are you fucking serious oh my god he's serious he he's <laughs> he gives people a little poster to print out at home that says something special. Now you're special. Here's your piece of paper. You're special. And it was like, he went on Canva and made a fucking poster for people to print out and be like, hey, I'm from this place. And But you know what? He's right. Because there's other people out there that will see that and accredit that of like, oh, he's so special because of that piece of paper. But like, you don't want to be that. You. That's why we want to study that stuff, know that stuff, know the psychology behind these things. And be beyond it. Because when you beyond it, you don't need that shit, man. Like, the best thing to have is people out there giving your word of mouth. Seeing you make transformations in other people. Showing, like, like taking the time to show other people's reviews. To show what you've already done for other people. Like, the person I gave the abundance candle to that manifested $10,000 the same night that she lit it. The people who had the $100,000 bonus after getting her abundance candle. The people who, every time they get their twin flame candle, their twin flame calls. It's like... Those things are credible and they're on Etsy, like listed openly for people to review them on the products that they go to. And then um, there's all these emails and messages I've received from people over the years who give me that validation. I would be much smarter to use much more of that in my advertising and in my stuff because it's authentic, it's truthful, it creates trust, and it shows that I can create transformation for people in love in a money, in their business, in their life. And it's just, it's just a matter of taking those steps and putting it out there, being like doing it, but being excited about doing it, but making sure you're in service to other people. If you're not going to be in service to other people, it's harder. The ways that you can do other things is more so like I make t-shirts. You're probably not going to be all fulfilled and feeling like whatever in that, unless you really truly love designing 
the things that go on the t-shirts and then selling those t-shirts because of those designs, okay? You want to be careful with what you just decide to do just because it's lucrative or just because it's easy. There's no quick rich thing out there unless you're scheming, lying, and stealing. There's no quick rich. So you put your time in, you put your effort in, you do what you're obsessively in love with, and you keep doing it to a level and degree that 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 sustains you and helps others and you keep incre increasing your value you keep increasing your worth you keep increasing what you're doing or what you're giving because you have that ability to do that and you just have to trust you trust your gut and be intuitive too so if you're not an intuitive person try to do some intuitive exercises and growth meditation get your mind set come up with foundations come up with like a plan you know come up with um, like, this is the thing. This is my funnel. I'm going to bring attention to me through this. I'm going to set intention with this. I'm going to have a call to action with this. And I'm going to guide people or stream people to here for the purpose of X, Y, or Z, which could be, I want to get a subscriber. I want a person on my email list. I want somebody to go to my Etsy shop. I want somebody to purchase this one item, whatever it is, always have a system behind it as to what makes sense or what you're trying to do, what's your final outcome of, and sometimes just be good to people and give to people just because it's nice to do, and you will receive back tenfold. Anytime I go out there and do just out of the goodness of my heart, or I, you know, accept something in the moment that seems like it's detrimental or taking from me, which other people might not let slide, I'm, I'm returned tenfold, return tenfold. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful the last person who did it was somebody that came on my live. The thing wasn't working for them on the live. And I was like, that's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll do this anyways. They ended up spending all this other money in other places. So it was like, oh my God. Like I didn't need to let them stay on when they were. Because like other people might have looked at that as manipulative of like they're just lying that they couldn't make the super chat work because other people had super chat work. I could feel genuinely that that's not what the case was. And that person took value from the messages that I gave to them. And they went and purchased other things from me. When I had said, you can just go donate on or, or buy, even just buy my digital download, which is something I don't have to physically touch or look at or even know about when they sell. But if she wanted to give me that energetic exchange of the $10 donation, she could go buy my 30-day um, card thing. And still count for it and just that would still give me that that bonus or that benefit of that energy exchange and she did and ended up you know doing it in more than one place and ended up buying more than one item and it was like wow thank you so much wow that was a good call to say that's okay wow when we give we receive but I didn't give I didn't even have, I was like, if you want to, you don't have to. I didn't have any expectation placed on it. I just let it go. When you're like, ah, I need that thing to happen, it won't happen. You'll block it. You're the opposite of what you're trying to be. You need to become who you want to become and become it and believe it and, and just put it out there. Don't feel like you need other people to be the person that's like helping you to do it. You know, sometimes we, like, when we find out somebody else that knows what they're talking about or doing something better than us, we feel like we really need them to help us, or we get, like, too caught up on what they're doing, and then we try to do what they're doing, and it's like, that's not your man, that's not your place, man, that's not where you're gonna shine, that's not your, that's not your bread and butter, that's not where you are obsessively amazing at, because that's what that girl does. Or that's that's why we should work together. That's why I'm coming together with other people right now to make offers that are like, oh, you do the past life reading part. You do the past life, you know, hypnotist part. You do the past life portal painting. And you do the past, you know? And we come up with this big awesome thing that everybody benefits from. And we all are sharing the love and we all are sharing with each other. So find other people that you trust, that you build that credibility with that you know aren't there just to benefit from you you know genuinely like you care about you find value in what you say and create a community of people that are like-minded and good-hearted and value you and be mindful that if you create a bunch of free content out the gate where you're not charging for anything and you're giving it all away for free you can't get mad at the freebie people seeking just more freebies you can't get mad at none of them from converting over to sales if you've never established that credit of level of your value from day one. 
that's a lesson I've had to learn over time. And that's, again, my dad said the other day, he's like, you should just start over. Because of, like, Bridget Rao Channel has that set expectation. Everybody there's for Twin Flames. I do anything other than the Twin Flame thing, like business stuff, it's going to drop the fly numbers, like, blah, 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 right? If I do something on here that's too far-fetched or too far away from the, the main stuff that was here from the get-go, that's going to drop, blah, 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 blah. I don't have to let that bother me and I can look at it as a good thing because we don't want those people if that's not where my focus is or I can make a whole new thing and have the new focus and the new stuff and all of that and not worry about it and see the benefits and wow how quiet like when I started the second channel I didn't start it with the idea of getting numbers I didn't start it with the idea of having 15,000 subscribers I didn't start it with the idea of any of that I just started it because I knew about that twin flame thing and I was like, nobody here is going to want this meditation. Nobody here is going to want to pick a card for Twin Flames. I knew because I had tested the waters. And nobody watched the stuff unless it was, what is he thinking about you? What is he doing? You know, like they didn't want anything other than that because of that level of obsession. Which I don't call anybody bad for having because I had it myself. But I healed away from that and that's why we see us switching. We got to grow and evolve. So never hold yourself accountable into a place of like... I've got to do this for the rest of my life either with anything at any time. If that list of what I'm great at and what I love to do changes, then you change, you evolve, you grow, and you put your best foot forward, and that's all we can do. But hopefully this helps you guys to get started with that. And like I said, I'm going to be doing the one-on-one -on -one mentoring for people in business and shamanic work and bridging those two worlds together, the creative parts, like the creativity parts, the be creatively you part, the like manifesting through creation, the like SEO stuff, the crazy stuff, the scary stuff, the how to advertise, how to be consistent, how to schedule your stuff, how to get around paying for everything all the time. All of that stuff is what, what's coming and also going to be available for, for more inclusive one-on-one -on -one stuff and then just videos that people can purchase like the one on my website now where it teaches you how to make your own oracle cards it's under $100 for the two-hour thing that I teach you all about what I do, where I use, where I go. I don't use publishers. I don't use um, advertisers. I don't use people who design. I don't have to wait. I come up with the design myself. I show you where I get the stuff that I use to do the design, what you can use, what you can't use, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, ideas of like different types of deck ideas, and then how to go to the place, upload them, and start selling them in a way that you do it so that you don't have to pay an arm and a leg to do. You don't have to have bulk orders. You could just do one at a time and in a way that's very easy. And you can even set it up that AI does it for you now in a much easier way. So we eliminate a lot of things out of our life when we embrace all of the changes and the chaos and the crazy and just know that there is there's so much out there for you you just have to start doing it and keep doing it and don't let the numbers the haters or anybody out there take you down sometimes life is going to hit us with a block and we're going to have to evolve and change but when we embrace that stuff that feels scary or feels difficult or we don't really want to do we're like oh god it's because of our north node and our south node right like our north node is like, mine's Gemini. Mine's communication. Mine's coming out here talking to you people, doing this social media stuff that I'm like, ah, about. Because my other node was my past life. Who I was before was a hermit in a cave by myself, never using social media, never talking to anybody. What are you talking about? So I thrive at doing that. I'm the best at hiding from everybody. But where I thrive with monetary in encouraging and, like, what they want me to do is me doing that stuff out of my comfort zone. When it's scary, when it feels bigger than you, when it feels like, oh my God, that's the stuff that changes your life for the better. The more scared you are, the more you should do. In Renee, namaste.